Hey guys, Mike here. So on this video, I'm going to show you how we do the prep, how we pour, and how we finish a two-car garage. So this is a 24 by 24 foot two-bay two garage, and we were hired to do the concrete floor, and that's it. We were hired by the homeowner to do the concrete floor. So what happens when, when we first get here, this is early in the morning, about 5.30 in the morning, what, we, what I got to do is I got to set the grade so we can snap our chalk line for top of concrete floor. Now this floor, the concrete's going to slope from the back to the front about two inches. So what I did was I went around, I set the laser up, that's my self-leveling laser, and I used that to check the grade of the dirt. And then from there I moved my, my grade up four inches because we're pouring a four inch thick concrete floor. And once I do that, then I can determine, you know, the, the height of the concrete floor in the front and then move it up an inch higher in the middle and then another inch higher in the back so it slopes two inches from back to front. And once I do that, once I get everything all marked out, now I got to put my, my board stops up where the garage doors are. And the, the way I do that is I got a, I got a hammer drill. I'm using a DeWalt rotary hammer drill. It's a battery powered one. And I, I screw a hole through the board into the concrete, and then I use my Tapcon screws to screw the board right to the concrete. And that holds it really, really well, really tight. And then it's easy to take off after, too. You just unscrew it and take it right off. So I'll have a link for that DeWalt drill down in the description, as well as the laser and every, all the other tools we use, guys. They'll all be down in the description if you want to check them out. So now I'm just putting the Tapcon in there. And I'll also drive in a couple metal pins there to hold the board too. So this is all pre-pour. So now the concrete showed up and he's mixing up and we're putting in the wire mesh. We also got fiber mesh in the concrete. So we're using a, a 3500 PSI today on the garage floor with fiber mesh. And then we also got some wire mesh in here. We're going to pull up into the concrete as we pour. You can see I got the wire puller with me. And Luke and Darren got the, the concrete come alongs they're pulling the concrete around with. We didn't have any slab bolsters today. A lot of times we'll have slab bolsters we can put down under the wire. But we didn't have any of those with us today. So we're just going to pull the wire up. Get some concrete under it with the aggregate under there. And that helps keep the concrete up into the wire enough to, to make it do its, do its job. So we got about, there's about 10 yards of concrete on this truck. We're going to get, we'll get three quarters of this poured out before we start screeding it. So I'm running the chute. We're pouring about a five and a half to six inch slump for the concrete. Slump is how wet or how dry the concrete comes out of the truck. You know, it's usually rated, you know, between, I don't know, zero and ten. But a four, a three and four inch slump is, is pretty dry. A five and six is pretty workable. You know, when you get up above six, you know, seven, eight, nine for a slump, and that's pretty wet. That's that's kind of too wet to do floors with. So we're getting our edges magged. We're magging them. We snapped the chalk line around the outside edge, and we're getting that magged for our grade. And I'm shooting a pad, of what's called a wet pad, in the middle for our grade in the middle of the slab. So that way I know that, you know, the slab, the concrete floor slopes perfectly from back to front. By using that laser to make a pad in there and you'll see how we're going to screed a wet pad using the one I'm making right now with the laser. Darren's got the screed. That's probably we're probably using a 12 foot or 13 foot screed today for this. That's a magnesium screed and those are the kinds of screeds we use whenever we screed concrete if we're not using a vibra screed. A lot of times we'll use vibra screeds too but mostly on flat stuff, not usually on stuff that's sloped like this. We got it a little bit low in there, so I'm pulling up some extra concrete for the guys. And then we'll get our center, we call that our center pad struck. And you'll see how that leaves like a smooth wet pad right in the middle of the floor. And then we use that to screed off from. We don't use, you know, we don't use screed pipes. We don't use screed rails or anything like that. We were taught to wet screed, which is what we're doing right now. So Darren, way over there on the right, he's kind of kicking and filling his, you know, footprints as he's screeding. And Luke was screeding from the outside of that pad. 
So we'll get that that side screeded, and then we'll come right over and screed the other side, and then we're, you know, just about half done this thing. We were running a little bit low on concrete, it seemed like, in each of these bays, so we had to pour out a little bit more and pull some more in. But we finally got it right. How many of you guys wet screed like we do, or... Or have tried it and find that it's pretty hard to do. Let me know down in the comments. Now Darren's going to get that bull floated while Luke and I get the, the other half of the garage ready to screed. We're both magging the edges. And Darren's going to finish up. That doesn't take very long to bull float. Now Luke's got, Luke's got the screed over there with Darren. We're always, we always strike in front of the garage door to make sure that's perfectly level across there. And remember, I marked it with the laser in the beginning, so we have all these marks to go by from the laser. And then we snap a chalk line from those marks, so we got a solid chalk line all the way around the inside perimeter of this garage. And now we're going to finish screeding it out. And then I'm going to show you how, what, you know, Darren's going to stay in power trial this, so make sure you stay for that to watch how we power trial. And then watch how, you know, he, he gets this thing so smooth, which is what the homeowner wanted. At the very end of the video, you see how smooth this floor comes out. There you go. I finish up bow floating it. We never leave any floors we do just bow floated. Unless, it, unless it's for like a, you know, a, a, what we call a mud slab or a trailer pad or something like that. That's going to get covered right up. So here's Darren. He's using, he's using the MBW Power Trowel, which is it's an American-made power trowel. MBW is from Wisconsin. It's a 36 inch power trowel, low vibration and very high RPM, so it, it's a really nice running power trowel. And he's doing what we call, he's floating the concrete. So this is first float, the first pass across the concrete. And you can see how it works up a little bit of the paste, takes out the bull float lines, takes out any little minor humps and dips, you know, from screeding and bull floating, and just helps level out the floor a little bit better. And he's power trying that based on you know how it's drying where the sun hit it first and you can see he's got quite a few clouds today so it kept going the sun kept going in and out behind the clouds and he's getting it all floated and once he gets it floated you know we got these special blades on there called float blades he'll take those float blades off and then he'll just use the finish what we call the finished steel blades on the power trial and that that's what makes it really smooth is using those steel blades. All in all, this probably took him about, you know, maybe between five and ten minutes to, to get this whole thing floated like this. And then he, of course, he does his edges by hand. So he'll, once he gets it done, he'll go around by hand and smooth out his edges to make sure the edges look really, really nice. And then he'll let it dry for a little bit, and then he's going to get back on it with a power trowel. Every time he, he hits it with a power trowel, you know, he, he lets it dry for a little bit, then he, he hits it again, then he lets it dry for a little bit. It gets smoother and smoother. Most of the time, it takes probably like four or five passes like this with a power trowel before it's done. So now what he's doing is he's got his hand trowel, and he's going around the edges, hitting the garage. He's, he's troweling the garage doors now, making sure they get get nice and smooth and then he'll go around he'll do the back edge whatever he can reach from the outside of the foundation he'll get it nice and smooth and he just likes to stay ahead of himself when he's finishing by himself like this you can see while he's got time you know waiting for the floor to dry he's going around making sure everything on the edges are nice and smooth that's just the professional way of doing it it's you know, the power trial is going to finish it nice and smooth on for most of it, but it, it leaves about a two or three inch area out away from that concrete wall that it doesn't really get very good. So you got to do that part by hand. So now he's just got the steel finishing blades on there. And those are, those are bolted right on there. The other ones we were using, the float blades, they kind of slide on over these finish blades. And then we just slide them back off after that first hit. So the finish blades are going to start smoothing out the floor, the concrete, quite a bit more, as you can see. 
And then usually, you know, when we power trial, we'll cross our pattern from the first time we did it, 90 degrees, and that just helps flatten and level out the floor even more. You can see, remember I said we put a two inch slope on this from back to front, you can't even really notice it. It's not that much slope in 24 feet, but it's just enough so when you drive in there with a car and the car's dripping water from either, you know, rain or snow melting off it or whatever, it's enough to get the water to run towards the doors and not leave a, a puddle in the middle of the floor. Yeah, that really shows how much smoother it's getting on just this second pass. Darren's been finishing for a long, long time. He's been working for me for at least 25 years. So he's, you know, he's one of the better finishers around in the state. He definitely knows what he can do, and he can finish a lot of concrete by himself. You see, when he, when he bends over like that with his hand trowel, he's filling like a little rock hole or something that is just easier maybe to finish by hand than it is to finish with the power trowel. So he'll get this pass finished up. And again, this took him a total of, you know, you're talking minutes here. No, it doesn't take very long to hit a 24 by 24 garage with a power car like this. Maybe five or six minutes at most, if you know what you're doing. And then, you know, he'll shut it off and let it dry a little bit more. Maybe, maybe 15 or 20 minutes in between hitting it. And then uh, it, it keeps getting smoother and smoother. So now he's on his third pass here. And he's gonna let that, he's gonna get it so it's nice and smooth before we're done. That's just what the homeowner wanted. Some people want him, want to leave him a little bit fuzzy and some people want him really, really smooth so they're easy to sweep. We just, we, we mostly finish them smooth if nobody tells us. But we'll leave them a little bit fuzzy if somebody recommends that that's what they want because they're worried about it being slippery. We find that, you know, like anything, if something gets wet, it gets slippery, but not any more than any other type of floor in wood. You see how he runs that thing back and forth, back and forth. He's got it, he does have a system and a pattern he goes by, you know, each time to flatten that floor, level it, and smoothen it all at the same time. So that's it, guys. I mean, that's what it looks like right there. He hit it one more time, so he hit it four times. You can see it shine. So it's got a nice, smooth finish. And that's generally how we finish all our floors. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.